right. So I have Craig as a backup, just in case. All right, so let's get into it, and I will share my screen as well. All right. Okay. GM, GM one and all, welcome to our weekly all team tactical meeting for B card, where we're going to go through um, the work that's going on around our organization, sync up, eliminate blockers, and prioritize our work for the next week. I'm going to take a quick attendance. Now, the downside of me recording and uh, and doing the notes is that. It looks like the um, the Discord is not going to show everything. Anyways, thanks, Blue Bear. Our Christy is here. And Lou is here. Anyone want to take notes for me um, so that we actually get the notes in the uh, in the in the recording as well? Actually, you know what? I would love it, NF Thinker, if you were able to host the meeting. You don't have to take notes, but hosting the meeting would be nice if, uh, if that's something you think you can do right now. What do you think, NF Thinker? Sure, why don't you take notes? But eventually I would like, uh, I, I guess like one of the things I was thinking out of the retrospective um, was that I think I would like more people to be able to, um, to be able to to run the different meetings, like kind of the, the, the way that one would run them in like an agile way. So I wanted everyone to get practice. And I was thinking maybe this meet is one of the meets that people can run um, because I'll be here every week so I can give feedback as we go. Um, so if you wanted to run the meeting, maybe next week. I mean, you could run it this time if you feel comfortable, but if you want a little prep time, you can, you can run it next week too. Okay, awesome. And would you mind taking notes so that I don't have to switch back and forth? All right, thanks a lot. All right, on the, uh, so I got our attendance down there. Um, on the lag metric side, um, we have 300, uh, sorry, 3,786 transaction volume. I actually don't remember what that was um, last week. So let's just take a quick peek before I forget. In the B card retrospective here, we had um, 3,000. So it's plus 700. So, ooh, pretty good week actually. Plus 700, transaction volume. All right. Um, on the lead metric side, we have 13 new users, mainly from our nouns campaign, two communities deployed with one new one in the works, four returning users, and 19,000 OP um, in the multi-sig. So we, we uh, took some time with multi-sig to claim the OP that we got from last round. Um, so that's now in our OP multi-sig. Um, on the side of team-wide announcements, I took the day off on Monday to take the kids out um, for holiday in Canada, and uh, everyone was just on point with this nouns launch. I just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, I think like one of the things I love about being in a team is when everyone has each other's back. Uh, so I noticed that Tom and a thinker, um, you guys were really in there and, and supporting now. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. And it just reminds me um, that we're on a team that I actually like to be on. So thank you for that. Um, also on the retrospective last week, there are some notes there if you want to take a look. I haven't processed it, but essentially the next step from that is to process it and update our strategy playbook and our milestones. Now our milestones are probably not going to change much from where they were, but it's still good because I haven't uh, updated the strategy document from last season to get those milestones in the strategy document as well. Um, speaking of milestones, um, so we don't have any new members here, unless TrueCat you feel like introducing yourself but i noticed that you um rejected my speaker invitation so i'm gonna assume you don't want to introduce yourself wait a wait a second or two no all right well i'll let you speak one more time just in case but if you reject me i'll know that you don't want to speak um and going down into the milestone perspective um, we're aiming to create revenue and so we have launched the poc to the public this was the milestone 
that we completed last week by going into public beta. Uh, and so that is one milestone out the door. The new milestone for the product team is to get 1,000 weekly transacting users. I put weekly active users here, but it's really weekly transacting, transacting users. And what this means is that they are using the uh, they are using the card. So they don't even have to open our app. They just have to use the card. One would hope that that would be easier, but when, uh, when it comes to concerns of money, um, we need to ensure that we are credible enough so people actually feel comfortable using our app. That is the next thing we have to figure out and unlock. Um, in general, we can talk about that, but we're working on two things, top of funnel and bottom of funnel. Um, but the public beta is out the door. You can now share that link with anyone you want, app.getbcard.io. I will hazard a guess that most people will not be interested in that link the way it is right now. There are only two communities, so really the only two kinds of people who would be interested are people who live in the United States and are part of Bankless Now, or people who live in the United States and are part of Nouns. Um, and even then, it's probably a subset of those people. So, um, you know, sharing the link publicly, feel free, um, but uh, it's gonna take a couple more communities before we start getting into a place where people can actually find communities that represent themselves. And then sharing that link publicly will be a little bit more uh, efficient, let's say that way. On the side of the Nouns partnerships, we did make some updates to the app to help our partnership um, because they wanted to um, have claim codes and because they wanted to use a frame, we had to make a couple of updates. Thank you, Tom, for that. Um, we also started getting some feedback from our users, including a lot of them calling in to activate their card, which we wanted to avoid. Um, when I asked these users, um, and during user testing as well, we took some notes on this, um, it appears that they're just following the instructions on the carrier, which makes sense. Uh, so I did send Crystal some updates to the carrier. Uh, that usually takes 10 to 15 business days, so it's gonna be a while before we get that out the door, but essentially it's going to change. Instead of telling people to call to update their card, it's going to tell them to go into the app um, and add some funds, basically adding funds to automatically activate your card. Um, so that's where uh, we're going with there. Uh, we had a couple of bugs, including sending users the wrong cards. Um, I think something like 10-ish nouns users um, accidentally ordered the B card. This was our fault. Uh, not there, so we're gonna figure out a way to transition these users to the card that they actually want, the nouns card. Um, and because uh, you know they may have ACH to their original account numbers and stuff, we're gonna have to do some sort of transition plan where we actually reach out to these users most likely, unless uh, we can do it in the back end without the users even noticing. We're gonna have to ask Transcard about this. Um, we're gonna hopefully speak to them today. On the reward side, it's much better than this time last week. I would say it's still not quite ready for prime time. Um, there's some ongoing work uh, that we're gonna talk about, but the next step really is to user test uh, this flow and try it with different wallets and platforms. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, we also, I've, I've also been bugging Transcard for the rewards reconciliation. They sent me three or four different invoices this month because I kept um, using our numbers on our side and great work, Tom, to actually have the numbers on our side available for us. But basically, um, saying that's not quite right. I think based on our deal, we're supposed to be getting this amount of revenue. So now, um, I hope next month, Tabitha will just uh, will just have the revenue share ready for us. Um, so I won't need to, I will still obviously check it, but uh, hopefully it won't take three rounds of revision. And so we can reconcile those rewards. We still need to figure out how to take that 67 cents, 67 and a half cents of rewards and send them to our users. Um, Tom and I, let's talk about this tomorrow at uh, the product meet, so we will take a look at that. Um, in terms of our content funnel, Rainus, how's this going, and Coffee Crusher?
And I actually don't know if we have Coffee Crusher here with us today. No, we don't have her here. So uh, we won't expect an update there. But I do believe um, that, uh, as you said, Coffee's preparing the launch email that's going to include things like, um, like uh, the nouns announcements as well. All right, so next up, we have the community funnel. Um, and I think, how's this going? All right, so we got a lot in the works there. Um, yeah, why don't we set up that pool together meet right after this meet? We'll just DM each other, figure out what a good time is. Cool. All right, on the raising 200K, um, we have Orange and Alliance Accelerators in the works, applications for them. We have claimed 19K OP into the, OP, into the um, Optimism Multisig last week, uh, and we need to send out the May patron email uh, I'll probably try to just quickly send it out today, or at least write it today and, and send it out later this week. Um, yeah, and so we'll go from there. Um, on the task perspective side, uh, this is going to be, uh, we have deployed our new brand. Well, no progress on this. Um, on the task perspective side, um, the bad part is that I will, I wonder if I should just put my Asana screen in the, the screen that is recording right now. That's what I will do. Okay. Um, okay, so <laughs> I'm just putting it over. It's going to look terrible, but whatever. It's it's there. The information is there. Um, first up, the role salaries. Can you guys actually see um, the Asana right now? All right, great. All right, on the role salary side. So last week we didn't do this because we were um, because we were doing our retrospective. So I'm just going to ask 
Um, everyone, um, Radius, last two weeks, did you spend five week, five hours at least each week on B card? Uh, yeah, it's getting to that. Yeah, but yeah, it's definitely, yeah, five hours is the minimum. Let's say that way. It's definitely, I'm putting in more than that as well. So I definitely feel you on the partnership side and a thinker. All right, Tom. All right, and I will ask Coffee Crusher later today. Um, so I put this to the new, uh, as our new milestone, we have 100 uh, or 1,000 weekly transacting users. If we have 1,000 weekly transacting users, we estimate that that'll get us above a million, uh, above a million um, monthly, um, above a million monthly uh, uh, <laughs> monthly transaction volume. So that's that's what we're aiming for here with a thousand transacting users. We'll have to see, right? It really depends on how much each uh, of those users transact, um, but that's kind of what we're aiming for. Um, we still have our other milestones up um, and our new brand should be probably closing pretty soon. This seems like it's in the wrong spot, so I will add it to accounting and remove it from here. All oh, right, um, Gitcoin GR20. Uh, how's this going, NF Thinker? made roughly 1400 USD I think Okay, cool. So we're looking at that next. Um, these I'll try to dust off when I update our strategy. Speaking of which, I will add it to here, update the strategy document um, and some success criteria. Success criteria. We have a, an updated playbook. We have uh, updated Asana milestones. We have communicated the strategy with the team. Um, and I will put, we had a retrospective here. All right, so that's something, at least we did one of these. <laughs> so we have retrospective here, and we'll work on this as we go. Updated website, Rainus, how is this looking? Yeah, you're super hard to hear, hear Brett. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's exactly that. So I wasn't quite, I didn't quite hear what you said, Brett, so you may want to type it into the chat. Barely. Yeah, that's a bit better. No, it's terrible. We can't hear you. <laughs> 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 
Sorry, yeah, we can't hear you. Maybe just type it into the chat. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, so you're meeting with Brett and Zuni Bear today to hash out details and move forward. That's great. Speaking of the website, I did update the CTA. Um, so now if you go to getbcard.io, it says sign up now, USA only. And when you click on that, it takes you to the site. Um, so that's just FYI. Um, going down, updated cash flow for POC. Arcusi, how's this going? You're muted, Arcusi. Yes, I can hear you now. Awesome. All right, yeah, I wanted to go through, uh, we'll go through it in high level today as part of discussion, um, just so, um, contributors kind of get an understanding of what we're trying to do here. Um, on the travel swap side, um, how's this going, uh, NF Thinker? I'm going to close this as it is a duplicate. Um, mark as merge duplicate. Okay. All right, so it's merged in to the other one. Um, and so I, I removed it off of here. Um, yeah, cool. Thanks for that update and a thinker. Um, origin dollar DAO. Uh, I guess, Tom, how is this going? So I'm going to put this in the inbox, um, and we will talk about this at product meet tomorrow. Make sense? All right, great. Um, Alliance Accelerator, how's this going on a thicker? The next brand, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm I'm not sure if uh, if you're ready to give an update on this, but how's this going, Brett? Not really, no. Why don't you just leave a Why don't you just leave an update on the Asana task? Um, maybe we can, maybe we can talk about um, how to push this forward. If you're available at the community at the communication call next week, uh, sorry this week, or we could do it at a product meet too, whichever one makes sense to you. All right, thanks a lot, Brett. All right. Uh, new on-ramp provider. How's this going?
Yeah, Zero Hash. Yeah, we met with him in the past as well. Not zero hash, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, no, that's great. That's exactly the kind of service that we need. And so this, this is just for off-ramping. It's not for on-ramping, though. No, but for us as a business, we want to have someone to on-ramp. Um, works for us better than these kind of monthly minimums, so that's great. Um, thanks for that update. Transcendence, how's this going? Um, oh, I guess it's Dennis Pinker again. I would, I would mark it as complete when the release of the videos is out. Um, but yes, we're just looking at the releasing. Cool. All right. Um, RevShare docs for partners. I feel like this is done. Okay. Are you working on it this week? Coffee Crusher is not... Oh, Coffee Crusher, you are here. How are you doing, Coffee Crusher? It's okay. It's early early in your, in your area of the world, so totally understandable. Uh, how's this article going? The world needs communities. Yeah, I started getting into a writing mood, just FYI, um, as I had to write a couple articles for the support site. So I should start getting into how B-Card makes money pretty soon, I hope. 
We shall see. Um, another thing I want to ask you, Coffee Crusher, is over the last two weeks, did you put in at least five hours on Decard? And deploy the Nogs token claim. Tom, I feel like this is done. We're just... Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I... Where's the May... Anyways, yeah, that's great. Video content, Rainus. I think you had an update on this. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's it's shippable for sure. But uh, yeah, the, the feedback that we that we gave was uh, like I I think you could you could release it if you wanted. The sense and um, I mean I think and I think said he liked it I I felt like it was a little bit too technology -y, right it's like I I feel like our brand is a little bit more um, organic and friendly so that was my feedback on that. You know, that's not something that I think that is like blocking us from shipping this. It's just feedback that I'm giving because, um, like, you know, uh, if you compare us to a crypto.com, a crypto.com will be like a very kind of like technology focused um, space brand. Whereas we're more like more organic, more, um, I don't want to say gritty, but in some ways, yeah, it's like that retro futurist idea that we were thinking about in the past yeah it's more human it's a more human brand um and it just didn't feel uh, that sound effect specifically didn't feel as human the thing that bugged me more honestly was how our um how our logo was skewed that <laughs> that if you have to fix one thing fix that But what happened with those, like, did, did those graphics get skewed? Because it is squared off, right, in our... Yeah, I mean, if you're making, if you're grabbing those, um, maybe you can, like, if you're, if you're grabbing that stuff from if you're making new brand assets like that like that bumper just grab the like you could grab the logos out of figma um and and change some of the colors and stuff like that yeah give it a go because then you're gonna get the squared off logo you can take a 20 minute how to use figma just for like how to cut cut and paste from there um yeah
All right, I added the May patron email. Try to send that out today. Other than that, is there anything else that we're working on this week that's not on this list? All right, let's get into, oh, sorry, you're sending out another email this week, aren't you, uh, Coffee Crusher? I'll stick this in here too. Yeah, I would prefer if you made each email a separate task. It's gonna be easier for me to do accounting. But yeah, just FYI. All right, anything else we're working on that's not in this list? All right, I'm gonna try to dust off this Asana list, uh, hopefully this week before next uh, before next meeting. Um, in the meantime, let's get into what did we ship this week? So, um, what did we ship this week? So we launched NounsDAO publicly, which was pretty huge. Um, and Tom fixed a bunch of bugs that came up as part of the process as well. Um, there is one mega bug that we still need to fix, which is a bunch of those users got the wrong cards. We're gonna try to figure out how to fix that um, hopefully today. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to fix it today, but we'll hopefully come up with a strategy today. Um, Tom and I uh, smoothed out the rewards flow. The refactor that we worked on is complete. Um, we added some additional screens as a result of that refactor and the wallet detection as well is working much better. Uh, definitely not perfect, but we need to test now. Um, we're going to be, uh, we, we did the reconciliation from Transcard, um, and this just required us to get multiple invoices from them until they got the math right. Tom made it much easier to add new communities. This is a big refactor, uh, started with the Origin Dollar DAO, so we can eventually, after we get through some of this, um, some of these issues on, <clears throat> uh, some of these issues on uh, Nouns DAO, we can enable it on staging and send it and send it out for people to see. Um, I wrote an article on crypto load and shifted to staging. Thank you for that feedback, Coffee Crusher. I'm gonna update that today. Um, I updated the long and short form legal copy as per required by our bank partner. Um, I updated the CTA on getvcard.io. Instead of saying join the waitlist, it now says um, get the app uh, US only. One of the things I was thinking, Tom, is it feels like a lot of people are dropping, sorry, not just Tom, everyone, um, as a lot of people are dropping off, based upon the numbers that I looked at quickly from nouns, it feels like a lot of people are dropping off um, before they get a card. I, I suspect a bunch of them don't live in the States. They just don't live in the US. And we captured their email, but we didn't get um, their country. So I think I might wanna add something into the onboarding, which basically asks, are you a US resident? And if not, it asks them which country they do live in. Um, and then we can record that somewhere. So then when we're ready, we can send that out to people. Um, on the uh, sound effects side, Dro shipped some sound effects for the Transcendence video. Uh, NF Thinker met with the MISO team to discover on and off ramp. Anything else? Um, anything else that, uh, that anyone shipped this week? All right, well, pretty big week with that Nouns launch. Um, we eventually, I wanna get into a groove where we're launching a community a week. Obviously, we can't do that if we have bugs and such. So it's good that we're doing this kind of phase rollout as we are, so we can fix bugs as they pop up, um, and different communities will likely find different bugs for us. So um, yeah, going slow and steady at first, but eventually we wanna to get to a place where we are, um, where we're shipping, you know, like a community a week. Um, and you know, maybe that's not, uh, realistic, but we'll see. So I wanted to take us into this cash flow now. Um, so this is something that Arcusti worked on. It's still a work in progress, but I think that um, this will kind of be something that I want to make a little bit more, um, like as we're in the build for fifth phase, and as we're aiming to make our goal to generate enough revenue so that we can be sustainable, I really want us to understand what it means to be sustainable. And to do that, we need to look at this cash flow. Um, so a cash flow is one of the three accounting documents that you need for every single um, business. Um, you have your balance sheet, you have your cash flow, and you have your P&L. <clears throat> or maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that. Anyways, I know it's one of the three, and cash flow to me has always been the most important um, because it allows you to, to, to kind of see your cash position in the bank and, uh, and as well project that forward into the future. Um, so that's... <clears throat> If you look at the accounting in the past, um, you'll see that I mainly use cash flow um, to, to map out our business models and that kind of thing. 
Um, and it's, it's a very common technique um, in startups in general. Um, so we have this cash flow here, uh, and you can see that you know we have the months along the top, and we have these kinds of um, line items on the side, which include things like um, how many in these are our inputs, how many new communities and total communities we have, um, what are our, what are our revenues going to be, um, what are our costs going to be, and then what are our um, kind of um, profit is going to be at the end here. Um, and so I'm looking at this now. I added this in here and I still think we need to, to do some some things, but I wanted to call out some high level things for everyone in general. So you can see that we have these new communities here. Um, you know, we're looking at a very modest community growth, um, looking at doing one community in May. So that's this month, one community in June, two communities in July, two communities in August. And so the end uh, of the year, we have something like around 25 communities. That's kind of our goal is to get around 25 communities. Um, and the hope is that for each community, um, we're getting something like 100 new users. Now, whether or not those numbers are actually um, good, we'll have to see as we start adding communities. So we added NounsDAO recently, and I think the last time I checked our dashboard, um, dot, sorry, tx dot, dashboard we added from nouns DAO, we added something like 20 people with a card so we had 13 people with oh yeah so like 13 people with a card um so that's if we can get up to like 100 over the month just by continuing to communicate with nouns DAO, um then we kind of will have reached what we're aiming for here um yeah, so the new users in April, the intent actually with the new users there, you're talking about this one right here in April, the intent was because um, NounsDAO had promised us uh, a thousand new users. So we'll see. I mean, I don't actually believe that. This is something that we need to, to uh, adjust as we go. All of these assumptions, um, the intent is that we update them as we go um, and then have like kind of like an estimated and an actual. So yeah. Do I, do I think that they'll get us a thousand users? Well, we'll see. We thought we could maybe through Bank of Dow and Nouns Dow get to a thousand users, but we're not quite sure. So these numbers all have to be validated, but assuming we get like roughly a hundred users per community, um, it gets us to, and we have some sort of churn and some sort of organic growth, it gets us to about, you know, around 2,700 users by the end of the year, which would get us at uh, 3.7, just shy of let's say 4,000, 4 million, um, in uh, in transaction volume and so that transaction volume will lead to you know a bunch of interchange revenue for us and that gets us to a point where we are um, creating some some gross profit now I don't actually want to include the salaries in here as we haven't okay so that's good so at the end of the day as long as we keep our costs pretty narrow we will end up with a positive cash flow um, with those users and we will end up having a profit sharing. Now this doesn't include our time at all. So the idea, well actually before we get into there, um, we talked about, I just wanna make sure that I went through these, community economics, yep. Our goals, yeah. So our goals, uh, we have a couple of goals here. Um, I think that the big thing here is that, first of all, getting to a place where we are making more money than we're actually spending, that's gonna get, that's gonna take something like, um, a thousand users right and so when we get to a thousand users we're gonna have some free cash we're gonna have some free cash flow um, there's going to be um, I think the profit sharing here is in the assumptions we're we looking at where is the profit sharing in these assumptions expenses profit sharing yeah so 75% so the idea is basically 75% um, of our um, monthly revenue goes to our contributors now we have to decide how we're gonna actually distribute it this is I don't think we're, well, we may have some time to talk about it, but essentially the idea is right now we're making nothing and we're all executing on this, um, but what if we start making money? Let's start giving that out to our team. Um, and the, the hope with that is that if we get to a point where we are um, creating revenue, or at least like more than like last month we made a dollar, dollar 35 of revenue, 67, like 50% 50, 50 of that is going to 
um, our community partners. And so uh, what we're looking at here now is, and sorry, the 50% is in here, I assume, card program expenses, gross profit, community revenue share. Yeah, so the community revenue share is here. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll have to see. I have to redo these numbers, but maybe these numbers aren't quite what I expected, but the profit share, because the community revenue share should be 50% of that, negative one times this, assumption C34, 50%. I don't understand how this profit is bigger than, this feels wrong, plus I, plus I30, I21 plus I30 revenue, okay. This, this community revenue, revenue share seems, seems off to me for some reason. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it. But the community revenue share should be roughly, yeah, it should be, it probably should be bigger than this profit sharing. I'm not quite sure why it's like that. Because the profit sharing, then we, uh, we, we also reduce these kinds of things. But anyway, suffice to say that we'll have some sort of profit coming out of this. Um, and then we're going to distribute that to our team. The intent is, hey, if we as a team create more revenue, then we get individually more revenue. So I wanna tie that direct line of, hey, if we get more users, more transactions, more transaction volume, um, then everyone makes more money on the team. Does that make sense? Okay, I think this was one of the key differences between something like a traditional corporation. I think like most corporations don't really share their cash flow statements around with people. They don't necessarily want everyone to know what everyone else is making. Um, it's actually better for them to keep that stuff hidden. Um, but for us, I would like to, to um, share that stuff because what I really think, I mean, here's, here's another hypothesis that we're testing, that we can create an extrinsic motivator. Everyone here, is already has already proven themselves to be intrinsically motivated by what we're building okay that means that even though we're not actually dispersing much money or rewards or compensation to the group most people here are still here still working um, even two years later so I think everyone here is kind of proven that they're intrinsically motivated to, to do this thing the next thing I want to add is extrinsic motivation and that ex extrinsic motivation um, comes in the form of essentially dollars. And so if we can draw a direct line between us increasing um, increasing transaction volume, um, if you do something to increase transaction volume, everyone benefits. B card benefits because we have more transaction volume going through our system. Um, our partners all benefit because they have more transaction volume going through their systems. Our communities benefit because they're gonna end up more transaction volumes means more money for them. And our, our contributors, um, our contributors benefit because more transaction volume means more profit share uh, every month. Okay, so that's the kind of intent behind this. Um, as I said, we need to actually look at these numbers because I, I don't actually think they're correct now, um, but uh, I will take a closer look at this. And another thing I wanted to show you, and this is kind of like, um, kind of like our, our pass fail point, but if we get to something like 11,000 users, and it's not showing it right here, but essentially if we get to 11,000 users, um, and this, uh, uh, because I told Arcus to change things, um, it's not quite right, but if we got to 11,000 users, then we're gonna be able to support, I think something like one, two, three, four, five, six, around um, $700,000 worth of um, salaries a year. If we have 11,000 users using the card, um, every month. So we'll see. I mean, I, I can't say for sure, but that gets us to about 16 million monthly transaction volume, um, 11,000 users. And of course, again, these numbers, we, we don't have them validated yet. In fact, the numbers that we're getting are lower. So uh, right now they're lower. So we don't know uh, for sure if this is going to be the case. But if we can get to something like 11,000 users, um, that gets us into a point where we are um, uh, starting to get into a place where, where we are sustainable as a business. Maybe we're not all working full time. Uh, I actually don't know if that 700,000 is, is correct now that I think about it, but um, we're getting into the point where we need to be a little bit more sustainable and maybe I jumped the gun on sharing this cash flow, but feedback early and often 
Um, so yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I didn't put into here yet, and this is something that I actually need to discuss with our FISI, we'll discuss it at the ops meeting tomorrow. I'll try to take a closer look at it today so that we can actually have that discussion with a little more, um, with a little bit more um, certainty tomorrow. But essentially, whatever that profit sharing number is, there's going to be um, a couple of, of chunks taken out of it. One, active contributors. Um, should get a chunk of it. So people who are working on it right now, and the reason for that, and actually they're, they're the first priority, um, and the reason for that is because um, active contributors are the ones who are most likely to increase our transaction volume on a month-to-month -month basis. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, we should definitely um, reward our active contributors. So let's, let's say for a second, like, uh, they get 50% of the profit share, okay, in whatever shape or form. And then another chunk needs to go to um, the people who have, who have worked on this in the past. And the way that we're going to look at this is basically how much V-card have people accumulated. So there are people who are working on it now, and then there are people who have accumulated some V-card, and maybe they didn't get any other compensation for the work they're doing. We do need to um, compensate those people as well, and we should set aside some of that profit share for this group of people. A third group of people is our patrons. So the people who put up the money so that we could launch at all, so that we had some money so that we could actually get into this agreement with Transcard, do our legal fees, these kinds of things. So that group of people um, should also, I, I don't want to create like a direct uh, line for them, uh, like how we compensate those people uh, will be different. But essentially, our patrons are also um, needing to have some sort of thing. And maybe that turns into like a DAO where we put the money for them and they get a vote on how that money gets used. Um, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work, but some portion of our revenue needs to go there. And then we need to keep some of that revenue as well for the company itself. So, you know, what if we lose our deal with Transcard and we no longer have the ability to... Um, generate revenue one month and we need to scramble and find another option well we need some sort of cash on hand to be able to make that happen uh, and so we need to be taking that out of our monthly revenue in general uh, another thing that I think that we should note as well is that in the future uh, we want to be as well um, having our users be part of this maybe they're not getting direct revenue but maybe they're also as part of a DAO as well so definitely um, we need to include that. And by the way, um, what's down here is like, you know, we said 75% for um, our active users. It may be something like 50% and then another 50% going to the, the company itself or something at first. And then eventually we start adding things like from that company um, portion, we, we start paying out people who worked in the past. I mean, I have some opinions on how that should work. Uh, essentially, I would love to... Um, have people redeem their B card, like, you know, airdrop B card to the people who actually did it, and then have them be able to redeem that for some sort of kind of, um, let's say, fixed dollar value. So if everyone who worked on B card were able to compensate them, you know, $100, $100 uh, an hour for, for what they worked, um, that would be an okay outcome, I think. But we'll see, right? Like, there's lots of ways we can do this, but the, the essence is that everyone has a seat at the table and everyone has some output. So sorry, I, I spoke too long on that, but does, does that answer your question, Anna Thinker? Any other questions, comments, concerns?
Does this make sense for people? Like the way that we're putting this? Yeah? Okay. So we'll work on making this more credible. We're at the end of our time. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone. You know, we're now publicly launched. We have our first communities. Um, we, you know, we have bugs and all this kind of other things, but this is the exact reason why we do these phase launches so that we can get through this kind of stuff. Nouns is one community among many. Um, there are many more. And because of the way that we've set ourselves up, it is possible that we could be um, releasing a community a week or even more. Uh, so all this to say that our goal of helping to empower communities is extremely close. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone um, for all the work that you're doing to make this happen. Um, let's not forget that every community that we uplift uplifts our community, the B-Card community as well. Um, so thank you so much for all that you guys are doing. Um, I think that if we do this right, we're gonna have a massive impact on Web3 in general. So thanks a lot. Sure, what's up, Andy? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like the copy? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, sometimes weekly, I, I mean, in general, when I write copy, I'm typically not writing copy in a group. Um, so I rather just like, write some copy, but maybe after you go through it with Zuni Bear and Brett today, I'm sure that they can help with some of the copy, but any copy that's missing, um, you know, I can help write it for sure. Um, but I would rather like write some copy and then send it out and then, and then we like meet after we kind of have our initial copy. Kind of. Sure, yeah. Okay. Sure, Andy, why don't we why don't we meet immediately after this meeting? Okay. Yeah.
Sure. Sure, Andy, why don't we meet right after this meeting in Geek Hard Voice? All right, cool. Thanks, everyone. I'll meet you in Geek Hard Voice right now, Andy, okay? See you later.